This is the absolute position encoder I developed to precisely control the movement of robotic actuators. And to be honest, this encoder does not work as intended. So this video focuses on fixing the biggest issues that came up when building the first prototype. And I can tell you this much. By implementing those changes I was able to obtain highly responsive signals up to a speed of 800 RPM. So let's dive straight into the first adaptation I did, which includes ditching the phototransistors for photodiodes. I therefore assembled a new board with 0805 photodiodes. These have a higher sensitivity since they do not include the additional transistor amplifying the photodiode current. Additionally, I exchanged the infrared LEDs to 0805 format to achieve a better match and mechanical layout. This change was mainly necessary to be able to sense the shading of the infrared light more accurately, since I am now able to operate the photodiode directly with a transimpedance amplifier. This may sound cryptic at first, but mainly means that we directly amplify the photocurrent into our output voltage, which is more efficient and responsive to process. Let's take a closer look at the circuit. The transimpedance op-amp circuit configuration converts the input current source into an output voltage. The current to voltage gain is based on the feedback resistance. The circuit is able to maintain a constant voltage bias across the input source as the input current changes which benefits our application. When we now spin the encoder disk at a constant speed, a decent signal is visible on the op-amp outputs. Here the channel for the 7th and 8th bit are measured. This leads to a nice waveform even though the signal is closer to a sine than a square wave and we can see some crosstalk on the 7th channel. To overcome this, a second operational amplifier will be introduced to post-process the signal and turn it into a digital signal, which is easily readable for a microcontroller. It is configured as a Schmidt trigger, which is a comparator circuit with hysteresis, implemented by applying positive feedback to the non-inverting input of an op-amp. Applying this change, the output signal should have steep edges and range from 0 to 3.3 volts. To test all these modifications, the case and the spinner had to be printed. I also mounted all of the components to a breadboard. There we get a very clean response at least for the two implemented channels. Since those are the most fast changing ones, it is safe to assume that the modifications are valid to all of the other channels as well, even though modifications to the hysteresis thresholds might be necessary. These modifications should solve all the previous issues that occur with the prototype. Still, they have one big downside. The receiver, transmitter as well as the encoder disk have to be redesigned. But this gives us a chance to implement other nice updates as well. We can change the PCB holes to copper patches, since I realized that FR4 only slightly dampens infrared light. Additionally, the encoder pattern can be updated to grey code, as many of you suggested in the comments. This should improve robustness, since only one channel is changing per absolute position. Additionally, an extra bit of resolution can be gained without having to increase the number of infrared LED and photodiode pairs. Also, I will be able to account for the mechanical tolerances and therefore design against rubbing of the encoder disk to the electronic components on the PCB. Therefore, stay tuned for the updated design and testing of the modified version. And if you did not see how I built the version actually leading up to these flaws, check out the video about my process from design to prototype on this encoder.